This lesson is about angle measures of polygons. Here are some examples of polygons of the types we will be dealing with. We got a couple of triangles. Four-sided figures are called quadrilaterals. Got a couple of, a couple of those. A five-sided figure is called a pentagon. A six-sided figure is called a hexagon. Make sure that you are familiar with the full list, all right? Um, a seven-sided figure is called a heptagon. An eight-sided figure is an octagon. A nine-sided figure is called a nonagon. And a ten-sided figure is called a decagon. Anything over that, um, we start using a general uh, name, and we call it an n-gon. if it has n sides, all right? Just using a variable. Now, a big part of this lesson is about um, the angles inside of these shapes. So, for example, we know that um, when we're dealing with a triangle, if we wanted to know the total of all the angles inside of a triangle, all right? So this angle, this angle, and this angle, we know that the angles inside of a triangle all right, add up to 180 degrees. And uh, hopefully you've learned that if you're dealing with a quadrilateral, um, the angles inside of a quadrilateral add up to 360 degrees. Um, now, there's a connection there that is useful to understand, and it's because a quadrilateral can be split up into two triangles. So each triangle was 180 degrees. All right, so this 360 came from doing 2 times 180 degrees. Um, and you can keep going like that. Uh, if I take a pentagon, I can split up a pentagon into three triangles. All right, so that's going to be 3 times 180 degrees, whatever that is. Let's see, 3 times 180. All right, that's 540 degrees for a pentagon. Um, I feel like we should be making this list. So for a triangle, 360 degrees. Uh, whoops. Triangle, 180 degrees. Quadrilateral, 360 degrees. Pentagon, 540 degrees. Okay. Um, now, if we wanted to keep going with this, um, it's useful to realize that um, what's happening is we're always multiplying times 180. Um, but to get the number of triangles, you just it's always n minus 2. Okay. So um, th if this is n, then I'm going to do um, 4 minus 2 times 180. Okay, that's going to give me 360. If I've got a pentagon, I'm doing 5 minus 2 times 180. Okay, that's going to give me the 540. So if I want to do for an hex a hexagon, I'm going to do 6 minus 2 times 180. Okay, so that's 4 times 180. And that's 720. All right, if I do 7 minus 2 times 180, that should give me the uh, angles inside of a heptagon. All right, 7 minus 2 is 5, so we're going to do 5 times 180. All right, that's 900 degrees. All of these are degrees. 8 minus 2 times 180. All right, so that's 6 times 180. All right, that's 1,080. Um, 9 minus 2 times 180. Okay, so that's 7 times 180. All right, 1,260. 
And finally, 10 minus 2 times 180. All right, so that's 8 times 180. All right, that's 1,440. All right, so if I were you, I would um, include this chart in my notes, including all of the degrees. Um, otherwise, you can just do this math real quick. Um, and in general, for our n-gon, um, if I want to know the total um, angles of any n-gon, of course, it'll be n minus 2 times 180. That's the formula. All right, for all the total of all the interior angles of a polygon, n minus 2 times 180. All right, problem number one. What type of polygon is shown? Well, um, let's count the sides. We have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Okay, that means we're de we are dealing with some type of a hexagon. All right, now I see these words convex and concave. What does that mean? Well, all of these um, shapes that I showed you a moment ago were all convex. Um, an example of a concave polygon, all right, this is a quadrilateral because it has four sides, but this is a concave polygon um, because of the way it's dented in. Um, I could pick two points that are in the polygon, uh, but then I could draw a line segment between them that goes outside of the polygon. That would make this concave, all right? But you can think of it as um, being dented inward. Um, this is convex because it has no such dents in it, all right? If I took this side and I pushed it in and it went like this instead, all right, that would be concave, but it's fully puffed out. There are no dents in it, um, so this is convex. All right, this is concave, this is convex. Um, so we're looking for a convex hexagon. And boom, there you go. All right, which statements are true about polygons? Check all that apply. All sides and angles in a polygon are congruent. Um, nope. That's not always true. That's true if you have a regular polygon, but this just says a polygon. Okay, so that doesn't have to be that doesn't have to be true. All right, if I have uh, this could be a polygon. Okay, that's a horribly drawn polygon. Um, but as you can see, all sides and angles are not the same. It doesn't have to be that way to be a polygon. Okay, um, so not the first one. Now, the sides of a polygon are segments that intersect exactly two other segments, one at each endpoint. Uh, sure, that's true. You know, here's, a, here's an example of a polygon. Um, each side is, in fact, a segment, okay, that intersects exactly two other segments, one, two. Um, right at uh, each endpoint. So that's true. So we'll check that one off. Um, in a polygon, all segments with a common endpoint are collinear. Um, collinear means they form a straight line. So that's definitely false. Okay, because like look at this segment over here. All right, they have a common endpoint, but they are not collinear. All right, that would be nonsense so no um, if all the sides of a convex polygon are extended none of them will contain any points that are inside the polygon so this is a convex um, polygon notice it's not dented anywhere okay um, so one way to think about a convex polygon is that if I extend the sides like if I extend if I extend, okay, and really I could extend this in any direction. If I extend this, I am extending and I'm extending. Notice that I extended all of those sides and none of those lines went inside 
of the uh, polygon. Okay, um, so that is true. Now compare that to a uh, concave polygon. So here's an example of a, whoa, got carried away there. I don't know what I want to draw here. Um, this is an example of a concave polygon, this sort of L shape. Okay, um, and if I extended this side of the polygon, for example, if I extended that, oh look, boom, I just went inside right there. So if you extend um, some of the sides of a concave polygon, it's going to go into the interior. Um, so that's true. The extension of at least one side or diagonal in a concave polygon will contain a point that's inside the polygon. Well, that's just what I was showing here. Oh, look, here's another one. If I take this and I extend, if I so here's one side, all right, but if I extend it, oh, kabam! I just went all up inside that polygon. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So, um, yes, if you extend at least one side um, or diagonal in a concave polygon, it will contain uh, it will contain a point that's inside of the polygon. All right, so I'm, my bet is on these three. Let's check it out. And there you go. Number five, what is the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a 12 gon? Um, well, let's look at the chart. Is that one of those ones that we did at the beginning? Oh no, our chart only goes up to 10. What do we do? Well, at the end we decided that um, we could use this formula. Interior angles, you could find the total interior angles by doing n minus 2 times 180 where n is the number of sides. So if we're talking about a 12 gone, all right, that means we're talking about a 12-sided figure, all right? So n is 12. Um, so if I want to find the interior angles, sum, um, then I will do n minus 2 times 180. Okay, that's a horrible 8. Um, but so that'll be 12 minus 2 times 180. So that'll be 10 times 180. So that'll be um, 1,800. And there you go. Number seven, three interior angles of a quadrilateral measure 55, 117, and 120. What is the measure of the fourth interior angle. Um, um, well, we're talking about a quadrilateral. We're talking about um, four angles. So um, let's consult our chart here uh, if we must. I mean, this is one you should know uh, by heart, but um, a quadrilateral has 360 degrees. You should memorize that. Um, so we're talking about four angles that have to have a total of 360 degrees. So we're talking about 55 plus 117 plus 120 plus the unknown angle all should equal um, 360 degrees. All right, OCD demands that I redraw that um, 360 degrees. Okay, so basically if we subtract the three angles that we're given, um, from 360, that should leave the uh, fourth angle. Okay, so um, I'm going to add these up. So, slide to your right. Okay, let's do this. So, if I have 55 plus 117 plus 120. All right, that's 292. So I've got 292 plus x is equal to 360. So like I said, we really uh, it's just a matter of subtracting the 292. Okay, so the fourth angle should be 68 degrees. Mm 
Boom, there it is. Number nine, which polygon has an interior angle sum of 900 degrees? Well, um, if you have the notes that we recorded at the beginning of this lesson, we can just look for the one that uh, has a total of 900 degrees. That's a heptagon, you know, a seven-sided figure. So if we're, we're looking for the one with seven sides. Now, um, say if you skipped past the video, at, uh, the portion of the video at the beginning, where, and you don't have the chart. Um, what you would do then is you would go, okay, they're giving me the angle sum of 900. I know a formula for the angle sum, the interior angle sum, I should say. Mm. I know the formula for the interior angle sum is n minus 2 times 180. And they're telling us that that's 900. So I could solve this equation for n. OK, and uh, uh, the best way to do that, I wouldn't do the distributive property. Oh, no. I would divide both sides by 180. Skirt. So that's going to give me n minus 2 equals. So 900 divided by 180. That's 5. And then I'm adding 2 to both sides at that point. And that gives me n is equal to 7. All right, so either way, if you, whether you uh, have the notes and the chart or whether you had to solve it out real quick and get that uh, we're talking about a seven-sided figure. So that's your first job. Um, actually, that's your only job. So now we have to just look and count and see which one of these has seven sides. Okay, so let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nope. Oh, is this the last one left? Yay, it must be it. Uh, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yay. Got to be the last one. Yep, there you go. Number 11, the sum of all but one interior angle is 776 degrees of a heptagon. Um, remember, a heptagon is a seven-sided figure. Okay, um, so the final angle must have a measure of what? Um, okay, so we're missing one angle. So that means 776 degrees plus one more angle uh, should be a total of whatever it is. Um, now we just did this. Seven sided figure, that's 900 degrees. Okay, we've got the chart. All right, now if you didn't have that, or if you didn't re remember that, if you didn't have the chart, then you would have to use the formula. All right, seven sides, um, we know the total uh, degrees is n minus 2 times 180. So we would do 7 minus 2 times 180. Okay, um, 7 minus 2 is 5, so we're talking about 5 times 180. Okay, so you get the 900 um, that way also. Um, anyway, obviously if I want to get the missing one, I would subtract the 776 from both sides. So 900 minus 776 um, is 124. And there you go. All right, number 13, we're supposed to find the value of x. Now these angles are called exterior angles. Um, and exterior angles always have a total sum 
of 360 degrees every single time. All right, no matter what the shape. So all of these have to add up to 360 degrees. So that means um, that means 140 plus 34 plus 56 plus x have to all add up to 360 degrees. So I'm just going to add up these three numbers. 140 plus 34 plus 56. All right, that's 230. So that means I have 230 degrees plus x has got to equal 360. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just going to subtract 230 from both sides. Okay, so that should give me 130. Boom! There it is. Okay, let's do one more. Okay, each exterior angle of a regular decagon has a measure of 3x plus 6. What is the value of x? Okay, um, let's break this down. First of all, a decagon, um, that's a 10-sided shape. So that means we have 10 sides and 10 angles. Okay, um, it's regular. That means they're all the same. Now we're talking about exterior. So exterior angles have a total of 360 degrees. All right, total. Um, so that means if we have um, if we have 10 if we have 10 angles and they all total 360 degrees. All right, if I want to find one of them, okay? So if I know that 10 angles and they're all the same, and they equal 360 degrees. Then if I want to find one angle, what am I going to do? I'm going to divide by 10. Okay? So um, if I take this and I divide by 10, that's going to be 36. Okay, and it makes sense. So if one angle is um, 36, then 10 angles should be 360 because 36 times 10 is 360. So each angle is 36 degrees. Um, now, it's telling me that each angle has a measure of 3x plus 6. So that means 3, uh, whoops, that means 3x plus 6 should equal 36 degrees. So it's just a matter of solving for x now. So I would uh, subtract 6 from both sides. So that will give me 3x is equal to 30. And then I would divide both sides by 3. And that will give me that x is 10. There you go. Look, I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck on your quizzes and such.